Now then, welcome to the Big Shower Build Part 2. For anyone that missed Part 1, I will post a link to that video at the end of this one. And this one picks up where that one left off. Well, the garden is in absolute bits. <laughs> but, next time you see it, the shower will be done. Blades all in place. Piped in. Carnage. Quick pit stop. Sausage wrap. Now I've got a red bull. Put the big switch on. <coughs> got my new boots. Look at these bad boys. I've got a nice pair. And I've got a rough pair. I'll put a link in the description if anyone wants any. 39.99. Bagging. The time has come. It's time to fire up Bertha. Yes, I have called the shower Big Bertha. Wish me luck. I'm nervous. Top tip, don't, uh... <laughs> don't get brave and start trimming your bushes with your, uh, your drone. I think it's still alive. Bushes trimmed anyway. Beautiful. Yeah, I think that's broke. <laughs> Should be right. So, enough of the video -y stuff. She's a beast. So this has been on now for, well, since September. It's now April, so about seven months. And it's been absolutely faultless. Just to reiterate how it works. So the water comes up from that feed pipe and that's all of the water that is going through the drum. I'm obviously restricted by a single bottom drain, which is why I've had to design the shower in this way. Because obviously, without having this bottom chamber that holds water, there's no way I could have a big shower because I wouldn't have enough water to put over the shower. So the water's getting fed in from the bottom drain up through the drum and then in this inlet that water is then getting split between the two pumps these pumps are both running at 100% and the 30k vario pumps each one's providing 
each spray bar. So it's probably got the 30k pumps, but I'd say in reality, I reckon I've got about 45,000 litres an hour going over the shower. So each each bit of water is perhaps going over the shower three times before it overflows out of the bottom chamber on average. So the water's overflowing out of that that overflow pipe and then it's going via <clears throat> it's going via the up pipe which is even with a really low TDS chugging away nicely. I normally have a bucket by this and it just catches all the foam. Now when I first put, put the shower on this chugged really really hard for the first sort of four days I was filling buckets up with foam constantly and then as I started to increase the food I went up to about 720 grams by the end of October and it was just chugging away nicely but keeping my TDS in the pond down it's worked brilliant I actually sort of got the design from looking at a I think he was an uh, Swedish fella and he had a shower over a bio and that's sort of where the the design came from was looking at that so the water's returning via this blade and then what I've also done is under the ground there is a 20k pump buried under here somewhere and what I do I have that on a timer and sort of like at the minute it just comes on twice a day and it gives me a real nice jet going up that back end and then that disturbs any debris and I've steadily tweak, tweaked it to perfection so rather than it fluffing it it just pushes it round nice and steady into the bottom drain but yeah it's worked out really nice really happy with it just check the tedious actually mega that is the same as my trickle in so my TDS is 80 and my trickle in I think I think is about the same as that awesome if anyone wants one of them I'll post you a link down below Amazon job so yeah TDS is 80 Any questions? Far away. But make sure you've watched the first two vlogs. Because most things should be answered in them. Everything's come out of winter really well. Trying to be sensible with the food. Until uh, about June. Once we get past the eggy phase. I don't want to risk going too early and then knacker up knacker up the proper season. Like these. Mega chuff with how well these are doing. I have got a couple of niggles in the pond. This is the big one. My Makashi has got an eyeball issue. I'm properly gutted about it and I believe what it is so on this return where the skimmer blows in that water comes from the heater and the fish love sitting in the flow but the problem is I had a one inch to a one and a half inch 
to one inch reducer pushed in it so it's got a strong flow and I'm quite sure that she sat in it and then it sort of got behind the eye socket or she's knocked it but it's been like it for a, quite a while now it's not as if it's a new thing I have had her out I've washed all around the back of her eye socket but I don't know I don't know what to do which is a shame because she's 85 cm now I brought her at 63 but everything else is looking really good this this uh, Kindai Showa it's got a really interesting robing developed the Benny was mega but now she's developing this it's hard to show you but she's almost got like a Goshki style robing Issa show is looking good can you see the robing I was gutted to start with but now it's just a little bit something different this is last year's Tosai Issa Showa Sumi's starting to come up so is this one a little Ginrin from Momotaro this is doing really really well Come and say hello. There she comes. Yeah, this is looking awesome. Absolutely perfect. Beautiful fish. Really nice. Here she is. Mega. Yeah, looking good. Good chag, looking well. I'm hoping to get her up to 95 this year. really good this Kahaku this is a uh, male from Momotaro one of the first fish I brought last year I had a few shimmies develop I just got her out him out should I say and steadily scratched them away with a scalpel and I was so debating on doing it, but now I'm really glad I did because it's coloured back in nice as clean as a whistle it's not perfect by any means, but nice I'm happy with the way this one's going the tail tube is massive really, really thick tail tube Great. Sumi's coming. I'm not sure whether it's male or female to be honest. I brought it as a unsexed. But yeah, it's looking good. Mikajaku looking fantastic never seems to grow to be honest I did notice since I moved over to feeding a sinking only diet at the end of the last season that's the first time I've noticed it really grow 
and I think it's because it's such a skitty eater but they don't have to be big to be awesome it's so nice the Ben is lovely Mr Sankey I think this has been on quite a bit today. We've got an air temperature of about four degrees. Up until a couple of weeks ago, I was holding 15.5 C as my set point. But we had a bit of a mini two day heat wave. So I thought rather than let the pond temp jump, I just went up by one degree per day just to ride it out and then left the covers open on the hot days and it worked out spot on because once it goes up I definitely don't like to let it drop back down so I sort of chased the temps so now my set point's 18.5 so as soon as it drops to 18 it'll fire back in by the way this pump is off because that is a backup pump for the pump that's actually running it which is in the bunker where the drum filter is because this pond was originally designed around a nexus and I didn't have a clue what I was doing the skimmer is just uh, a standard Olympic style skimmer it's stashed in the corner underneath the steps and it pulls down to a 20,000 dm vario and then pumps back up through this so I've just got this pump here just as a bit of a backup I have got a pleco in the pond as well and they really don't like a big temperature drop even worse than koi so yeah this is off the skimmer line obviously if I was starting this pond again today this is not how I would have it at all I would have two four inch bottom drains and then two three inch skimmer lines gravity all into one big drum then I'd pull the water from my bio chamber and put it through this and then all the rest would be pumped up to a big shower and then return it pretty much in a similar way to what I'm doing now but probably have a four inch return on, under the water this is my RO set up nice and simple but extremely effective TDS going in at the minute uh, <coughs> with my blend is about 70 I think I've just checked the pond that was 80 so that's the TDS of the water that's on the clean outlet of the 4040 but then it's being mixed with my tap water that's about 240 so the blend mix gives me a TDS of about 80 going in and then I fine tune it to get the pH where I want it in the pond at the minute I'm just running a pH 7.4 not running it skinny and a pH KH of 2 and I found that to be a nice safe mix and then if you get any problems and I need to run something like Learnex Pro that needs a KH of about 2 so or if I need to bump it up a little bit more from that I can buffer it quick whereas if it was really low I'd, I'd be in the shit right we'll talk more about that in a proper vlog when I can put it into proper context this is what they're getting fed at the minute uh, two feeds a day about 46 grams sake sinking wheat germ can't beat this time of the day the 
looking awesome. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already, then hit the bell icon so you get notified whenever a new video goes up. Other than that, I've left part one over there. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you on the next one.